This is Band of Brothers. It's a World War II history book by Stephen Ambrose that follows the path of the men of Easy Company, 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne, as they train up in Tocoa, Georgia, drop into Normandy, and make it all the way to Hitler's Eagle's Nest. Now, those guys on the front, those aren't the real guys from Easy Company. Those are actors. They were in the HBO series Band of Brothers, which was produced by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. So if you haven't read the book, perhaps you've seen the series. These are a few of the actual guys from Easy Company. Now, like many other men in World War II, after the war, these guys brought a lot of souvenirs home. Many of those souvenirs ended up right here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. In a previous episode of History Traveler, we saw some of those artifacts from the Easy Company veterans, including a lot of artifacts from Dick Winters himself. Honestly, we felt like we left a little bit on the table in that episode and left some questions unanswered. So we are digging back into the world's largest collection of Easy Company artifacts and looking at some of the American and German guns that were brought back by these guys in this episode of American Artifact. show you a few of the weapons that are attributed to members of Easy Company, Band of Brothers, 506 guys um, that we have in our collection and we touched on this briefly on the Dick Winters episode um, but we're going to look at them a little in a little bit more detail. This is Dick Winters G43 sniper rifle and that was brought home by Major Winters as a trophy of war in 1945 and he obtained that in Caprun, Austria. And when everybody was turning in weapons, um, he, he saw this weapon and he decided to take it. But it's not the only one he took. He, he actually took home several uh, German pistols and rifles, and he sold most of them before the series came out. Um, he sold, I think he had a little over 20, somewhere between 20 and 25 German pistols. And uh, he sold them through a dealer and um, the rifles he sold privately. And uh, we were able to obtain this a few years ago and it's, it's just, it's in such good condition. Um, I, I think he saw that and, and, you know, when they were turning in weapons, there's probably piles of them in Cape Prune and he just thought it was one that he wanted to take home and it has the ammunition pouch here with two magazines and it has the oiler kit here that was in the butt stock and also the manual and um, the scope with the with the original caps on it so it's it's a really nice barely used weapon um, they came out out late in the war and uh, of course this is his 45 his 1911 we we've talked about that before but um, you can see it a little bit better um, since we got it out of the case and uh, he carried that throughout World War II. He did not have it on D-Day because as we know he lost his equipment. He had two 45s and he left one back in England and he uh, he trained with this one, did not have it at D-Day. The story is he got a, a brand new one right before D-Day and that's the one he lost with his equipment and then later on he started using this one again and um, that was his sidearm throughout most of World War II. Now, uh, one of the questions that we get, on, we got quite a bit on the last episode about Dick Winters was, in the series they show um, a, a German pistol and Winters tells a story about a German officer surrendering, surrendering and handing over his sidearm. And the question is, where is that? And the answer is, he sold all his pistols before the series came out except for, I believe, that one and this one. And he retained those until later. Um, we obtained this one, but the pistol, um, as far as I know, was never sold. So the family still retains the pistol that you see in the series.
Just a, a real quick note on this G43. Uh, so the G stands for Gewehr, so this is a, a Gewehr 43. And this was one of Germany's first forays into a semi-automatic platform. So for those who, I, I don't want to assume that everybody knows what I'm talking about whenever I say semi-automatic, uh, that means that every time you squeeze the trigger, a round goes off. So you don't have to operate a bolt like what you would with the K98. Uh, so, the, the story as I understand it is that whenever, they, they had already been experimenting with the semi-automatic platform with something called a G41, uh, and then whenever the Germans went into the Soviet Union, uh, they captured uh, a firearm known as the SVT-40 and uh, sent it back for examination. They made some adjustments and the, the G43 was the model of semi-automatic rifle that resulted. Just an, an absolute beautiful weapon and of course this one uh, configured with a, uh, a scope. Besides Dick Winter's items, another group of Easy Company artifacts we were fortunate enough to attain directly from the family um, was Ron Spears items and, and that came right from the family. Um, Ronald Spears was also one of the commanders of Easy Company and um, after Dick Winters and, uh, and there's a couple guys in between but he was he was commander of Easy Company for the longest amount of time from um, the, the end of the Battle of the Bulge till all through occupation duty. And uh, he was portrayed in, in, the, in the book and the series as kind of a mysterious fellow. You know, they had, there's a lot of rumor and, and, um, and stories around Sp Ronald Spears. But what we're looking at are his, two of his captured war trophies. And we have a, a German P-38 pistol, 9mm, with uh, Bakelite grips. And a Luger. And which was one of the most prized war trophies of American soldiers in the ETO. And this holster came with the Luger. Um, I don't know if it's a correct match or anything, but it, it, it was in it when we received it from the family. And it has a DR mark here, and this is, this is for the Deutsches Reichsbahn, which was the railroad, basically, in, in Germany. And, the, you know, this would have been, they would have armed security and um, people working around the train stations and stuff, they would be armed personnel. And so it's got, it's pretty rare marking. And they came directly from the family, as I said, and um, we, I, myself and my co-author co on Hang Tough, Jared Frederick, wrote a book about Ronald Spears. It's titled Fierce Valor, the true story of Ronald Spears and his band of brothers. And these weapons will be featured in the book. And um, it is now available on Amazon for pre-order. The projected release date is May of 2022, and um, we, for the first time, are going to try to address some of the myths and, and folklore around Ronald Spears and give you the real historic story. We, were, we worked with his family, and uh, I was very happy with the results. Now, real quick, uh, Eric mentioned the book that he co-authored with Jared Frederick entitled Hang Tough, uh, which focuses on the, the letters and artifacts of Major Dick Winters. And if you don't have this book, uh, my goodness, you need to add it to your, your library because it is amazing. Has like some of the best illustrations that you can find of the things that came out of the Dick Winters collection. And if you go to the Gettysburg Museum of History's website, well, this is also available in a limited special edition. There's a, a book plate that was signed by the last surviving enlisted man of Easy Company, Brad Freeman. And it also includes a section of uh, parachute that was used on D-Day. And uh, they, they actually compensated Mr. Freeman for, for signing these. Um, so pretty pretty amazing thing that that they've done making this available to people who are interested in uh, World War II history in general and the history of Easy Company in particular. Two other weapons of Easy Company we have in our collection are the weapons of Forrest Guth, who was um, 
uh, President D-Day, he went the whole way through. He was a Tacoa man. And um, he also took a German P-38, just like Ron Spears did. This one has the black grips instead of the speckled Bakelite grips. And that holster came with it. Um, and this is his 1911. And uh, he got this weapon, I was told by his biographer, right before D-Day and he used it all through World War II. And I talked about in the, in the episode about Dick Winters, about Forrest Guth taking some photographs in Normandy, and he um, left us with a really fantastic photographic record of soldiers from Easy Company and some other units in Normandy. But this weapon is in most of those photos. He wore this in a shoulder rig on his chest, and you can see this very weapon being carried in all those photographs and, it, and it's amazing including the one the famous one where they're all in saint marie de mont and uh and it was used in the cover of band of brothers now he has fashioned some kind of other site there that's not the normal site it's slightly different if you look at dick winters side by side it's something a little unusual and I don't know if he just modified that or what he did and also the front sight is missing so I believe it either broke off or he had something else fabricated on there and, it, and it's now gone but this is exactly how we got it and this is exactly how it's gonna stay I'm not gonna put a new sight on it or anything I just think it should stay the way it was and uh, it's very heavily used and again with the Forrest Guth items we obtained those directly from the family of Forrest Guth. All right, uh, so those were some of the bring back weapons of Easy Company. Uh, pretty amazing collection to be able to see uh, things that, that Dick Winters and Ron Spears and, and Forrest Guth brought back after the war. So if you're a fan of Band of Brothers and, and World War II history in general, and also firearms, uh, collection doesn't get much better than this.